everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus. And together, we are the Minimalists. We're here with our good friend TK Coleman. What it is. <laughs> Alabama's in the studio. Hi, everybody. We got the rest of our team here as well. Coming up today on this free public minimal episode, we're talking to a listener about how to stop saying yes. We also have an outstanding lightning round, listener tip, and added value segment for you. You can check out the full two-hour maximal edition of episode 361, where we answer four times the questions, and we dive deep into several simple living segments. Ryan and I also get into a serious argument. (laughs) (laughs) All you need to know is that I won. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, you can check that out. Patreon.com slash The Minimalist. It's over two hours long. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free because say it with me, y'all. Advertisement suck. suck. By the way, Josh, when I win, you win also. Ah, So we both won. <laughs> I feel like a winner. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> hey, Alabama, where do you want to start today? Let's start with a question from Mary in Springfield, Virginia. My name is Mary, and I'm from Springfield, Virginia. I'm a teacher. My job brings me joy and gives me purpose. But for the first time in over a decade of teaching, I've decided to work part-time. I did this in order to create space to better support and be more present with my daughters. How does someone who is a people-pleasing, hardworking, quote-unquote, good girl, manage the guilt I feel when saying no to requests to do all the things I did when I was full-time? or How do I manage the disappointment I feel when asked to do things beyond my hours without compensation? I realize that this is something that a lot of women and especially teachers wrestle with. I want to learn how to address these feelings so that I can continue to say no and hopefully teach my daughters how to do the same. So how do you say no and then let it go? TK, this is a difficult one Mm. because it is much harder to say no when we feel an incredible sense of joy and purpose as Mary does. So yeah. it's not like she's dreading it. It's easy to say no to the things we dread, right? right. If I'm like, hey, TK, do you want to help me go pick up trash on the side of the road today? Unless you have a really compelling reason, it's going to be easier for you to say no because you have something that is better to say yes to. That's right. E- implicit in every no is a yes to something else, even if that something else is not something that is highly adventurous. To say no really means I would rather be relaxing, enjoying my own t- my alone time, taking a nap, being with a friend, planning out the rest of my week, whatever it may be, it's something else that you want to say yes to. And sometimes we avoid saying yes to alternatives and we give people these no's that we don't want to give because we're afraid we're going to be unloving. We're afraid we're going to be inconsiderate. And I actually think no is sometimes the optimal expression of love. Mm. Sometimes the kindest, most compassionate thing you can do for another person is to tell them no. Because when you tell them no now, you save them from the resentment you will feel in the future And you better be sure that bitterness is going to be expressed in some other kind of way. It's better to risk looking and sounding mean in the present than to actually become mean in the future because you didn't take care of yourself. And now you're engaging those very people you want it to be nice to from a place of resentment. That's no good. But why does it feel so difficult in the moment? And it feels like the opposite of compassion. If I'm saying no to you right now, and you know how good I am at saying no, Yeah. but I wasn't always that way. Yeah. I filled my calendar with everyone else's yeses because something was a hell yes to someone. I then took on their yeses. And unfortunately, what that did is it crowded out my own yeses, my ability to say Mm. yes to the things that were important to me. And what I realized, Mary, is that to be happy, I had to stop saying Mm. yes to the things that made me miserable. Even though in the moment, it's really easy to say yes. It's really easy to commit my future self a week from now a month from now, especially a year from now. Mm. Oh, Ryan, let's go ahead and put this on our calendar for next February. Oh, not a problem because I don't have to worry about it today. But now I'm punishing my future self. So why is it so difficult to say now in the moment? Mm. Yeah. No, no, please allow me. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, here's the thing is when you tell someone no and you don't know how they uh, interpreted that no, 
for me, it would be easy to feel guilty because I might assume the worst, like, oh, this person doesn't like me anymore, thinks that I don't like them, or mm. they're not a priority, or I don't care about them. We start uh, uh, telling ourselves these stories. Catastrophizing. Yeah, that we're totally making up. Am I repeating yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what does catastrophizing mean? Josh, give us the word of the day. I mean, it just means... Does it mean making something up? Yeah, it means that we turn everything into a catastrophe. Mm. What's the worst oh. case scenario, right? Oh, yes, mm. right. And and it's and it may not even be true, but that's the story we tell ourselves. Um, uh, and God forbid we expect the best. Like, oh, you know what? They understood. Yeah. They love me so much. Like, I don't have to explain myself, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I know that sometimes uh, in the past when I would say no, that's probably why I was feeling guilty. So when you tell someone no and you let them know why you said no and that they understand that, I think that is maybe how Mary can uh, avoid some of this guilt because then she doesn't have to make up stories in her head. I got a really good friend who was like, hey, man, you know, um, when I first met him and we're, we're hitting it off and he's like, hey, uh, really would love to you to like to show up um, at this meeting uh, that, that I host. And, you know, it's a bunch of entrepreneurs that, you know, he pitches me and I'm like, hey, man, I love you. I was like, but I, I can't commit. Like, if I commit to this, then I'm going to be fully invested in. I have to say no to this so I can say yes to like keeping that two or three hours on Friday mornings uh, available for me. And um he has brought that up so much. He's like, you have no idea how much I respected you for saying that and like letting me know. Um, so yeah, Mary, if, if you're if you're letting someone yeah. know what you're saying yes to, then um, then yeah, you can probably let go of some of that guilt. I would I would presume. Yeah, you know, sometimes the people who demand or request a lot of us almost like guiltlessly to the point where we resent them for putting us in these positions where we have to say no. Sometimes those people are really good for us because they challenge us to think more specifically and intentionally about the lives that we want to live and the things that we want to do. And sometimes we may not even think about what version of helping someone we would be happy with. And then when they come to us and say, hey, do this to make me happy, we just say yes to what they request out of guilt. But when you have a hard time saying no to people and you feel guilty, it's usually because you care about them. If this is someone that you absolutely hate it, you just say no with no problem. But it's because you actually do like this person and you do want to help them. And that's a good thing. But when you're in that position, I would take a moment to think about what a fun and feasible way of helping them looks like for you. And you don't have to say yes or no in the moment. You can say, hey, give me a minute to think about that. I don't know. Let me have a minute. And then you can take a minute and come back and say, hey, I can't do it that way, but I can do it this way. I can't do it on that day, but I can do it on this day. I can't do it for that amount of time, but I can do it for this amount of time. So you don't always have to say no. Sometimes you can say yes to their request in a way that's best for you. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Finding ways to say yes. Yeah that are renegotiating the terms of the yes. Yeah. Someone right. reached out on Patreon recently and they were like, hey, I realized that listening to The Minimalist Podcast, the ideal speed is 1.3 times <laughs> the normal speed. And for me, I like listening at like 1.8. So it's the yeah. ideal for that person is 1.3. I like listening at 1.8. And she asked, hey, is it possible on the Patreon app to listen at 1.3? And my initial response was, well, no, uh, you, you can have to listen to 1.25 or 1.5. I like, hear the options that are available, right? But I got to thinking, well, yes, there is a way I can say yes to this. Yeah. Because most people listen to the private podcast, the audio version of the private podcast via their favorite podcast right. app, mm -hmm. like Apple Podcast or Feedly or Acast or whatever you use. And when I was talking to them, I was like, well, yeah, just listen to it in your favorite app. Here's Here are the instructions. So it wasn't a yes We'll get Patreon That's to completely right. change their infrastructure. It was, no, most people actually listen this way. And I can say yes, but the terms are a little bit different. Yeah. Get creative with that yes. Sometimes we, we treat people as if they're being weak if they struggle with saying no. We, we treat them as if they're being a, a pushover if they really want to say yes. But your desire to say yes just means that these are people that you feel some genuine compassion for. You love serving them. And if you can be creative with that, yes, you can do it in a way that really feels right for you. And it will feel right only if it doesn't make you miserable. And then we're made miserable often by our expectations. We're going to talk later in the private podcast episode about every relationship bringing us misery and how our expectations 
bring us misery. And so, Mary, I want to send you a copy of our book. It's called Everything That Remains. It's Ryan's and my second book. We wrote it a decade ago, and it was really the story of two guys who started saying no to the expectations of the corporate world, started saying no in ways we hadn't before. And it was really shocking to people at first, because when you say yes, 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 and all of a sudden someone hears a no, it's breaking the pattern. Mm -hmm. It's breaking that pattern of yes. And that's how we have to do it. It's like if I haven't gone to the gym in a long time and then I start going to the gym, I'm probably going to be sore the next day. So the first few no's are going to make you a little bit sore because you're so used to saying yes. But that soreness, that saying no Mm -hmm. or stopping, you're not even saying no really, you're stop saying yes to everything. Yeah. That's what you got to do. You got to stop saying yes to everything that's making you miserable because otherwise you're just going to continue to be miserable. So if you like our podcast, I think you'll enjoy the audiobook version of Everything That Remains. Or if you want the book book or the ebook version, we'll send those to you. Any last words for Mary? Can you speak really quickly to the compensation question she asked? She's doing some work for free and it's and she doesn't want to do it, but she feels bad about the fact that she would rather have the compensation or be off work. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being compensated, right? Wanting to be compensated for your work. Uh, Ryan and I and TK, we all get compensated for the work we do, but we don't do the work for the compensation. Mm. The way that I like to think about it is money is a passenger in the car, but I never let it behind the wheel. Yeah, It'd be disingenuous to say it plays no role whatsoever because we live in a society that requires the exchange of mm. of money. Mm. And so there's nothing wrong with wanting to be compensated for what you do. The problem, and we're going to talk later about some of the problems of capitalism because a lot, this question comes up a lot mm. for the minimalists and I want to make some distinctions there. But the problem here is not the desire to be compensated. It's the fact that you feel, you might feel used if you aren't compensated. It feels unfair to you, right? Yeah. yeah. By the way, mon- the monetarily com- monetary compensation is not merely the only way to be compensated for right. something. Absolutely. That's a good distinction. Well, sometimes too, I mean, you got to put a barrier up. Like if you have a skill or a service or whatever it is that is really desired and people are constantly asking you to provide that for free, um, sometimes you got to put up a little bit of a barrier to kind of um, filter out some of those asks. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to think about the the other people in your life as well. So you may not care about the money or compensation very much, but the time that you're giving up might be something that the children you want to spend time with, they can be affected by that. So yeah. um, either demand that compensation or demand that time because both your money and your time is something that you can use to serve your family. Ryan, what time is it? Oh, Josh, you know what time it is. It's time for the lightning round where we answer your text messages. You can text your questions, your comments, your compliments, your compu salts. You can text all those things <laughs> to 937 202 Four, six, five, four. Yes, indeed. Now, during the lightning round, this is where we do our best to answer questions with a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. We put a minute on the clock for each of us so we can ramble on a little bit. By the way, we copy and share our pithy quotes on social media. You can find all of our minimal maxims in the show notes and over at minimalmaxims.com. Thanks to our good friend, Social Jess. Looks like Lehigh has a question for us. I struggle with managing anger towards what I perceive as wrongdoing or injustice. Any ideas on how to deal with this? Let's put 60 seconds on the clock for Ryan Nicodemus. (laughs) I was just reading yours. Yours is great. Uh, Yes, my, my, my pithy answer is this. Radical inclusion requires complete acceptance. So I, this came to me, uh, because of LA traffic, honestly, like I have really <laughs> been going out of my way to just accept the fact that Los Angeles is the way it is. There's, you know, 12 million people in LA County and, uh, you're going to have people who don't know how to drive. So the other day, um, yesterday we pull up to get on the 405. Um, there's this Porsche behind me kind of riding my butt on the exit. And then the lane splits to go to the two red lights and it's, you know, alternating green lights, one car per person. Right. Um, so I pull up to the red light and this guy just like goes around me and runs the red light. And I am instantly like this entitled jerk, blah, blah. But then I'm like, no, man, radical inclusion, baby. Like how, what's the compassionate approach? What's the charitable approach to this situation? And I was like, oh, this, this dude doesn't feel like he has enough. And how 
how how he must feel to just constantly take all the time. Yeah. All right, I got the buzzard, so I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw another 60 seconds on the clock for TK Coleman. Feelings are not there to be conquered. They are there to be engaged with imagination. I like that you feel bothered by injustice. If you're on a bus and you see some teenage kid push an old lady aside just so he can get the last bus seat, I like that that bothers you. We need somebody in this world to be bothered by the attacks and the assaults that go against human dignity. We need somebody in this world who can observe tragedy and say, you know what? I don't like that. And I don't like pretending like I'm okay with that. We could all go get lobotomies right now and not have any feelings, negative or positive, and just be in some state of passive peace. But we need people in this world who get angry. And that anger is not there to be exercised. That anger is there to be engaged with creativity. How can I channel those feelings of anger along constructive lines so that I can step up and do something about the things that need to be done? That's what we need. I don't think I could handle another lobotomy. Professor Sean, give me 60 seconds here. Ryan, I love what you were saying earlier about the Porsche that cut you off Mm -hmm. because you can get mad about that. Mm -hmm. You can see that injustice and you can get really frustrated by it. Now you're punishing yourself for his bad behavior. Mm. And as soon as we realize that, we can laugh at the absurdity of it. Maybe he did something that was creating some sort of micro injustice. Mm -hmm. But that injustice does not give me an excuse to make myself miserable. I can let it go. And that's so important with respect to my pithy answer, which is this. Mo expectations, mo emotions. (laughs) Now, we all know about mo money, mo problems, right? And here's what happens, though. I'm going to feel all of these different emotions that I don't necessarily want to feel. I'm open myself up for anger, for sadness, for depression, for despair, for guilt, for rage, if I have all of these different expectations. But if I declutter those expectations, (laughs) ah, I ran out of time. (laughs) You even got the clock in front of you. (laughs) You can finish that thought, though. Here's what I'll say. If I if I have more and more and more expectations, I'm going to make room for the emotions I don't. If I declutter those mm-hmm. expectations, what I actually make room for is contentment, mm-hmm. peace. I'm uncovering the pre-existing peace that is already there. Can Before I ask we, you guys a question, please? Go please, for please. it. Please. Do have either of you ever been in a situation, especially you, Josh, where your anger led you to do something about it that was positive? No. Anger led to do something. I know you got one from Burning positive. Man, but I don't know if you want to tell it. And I'm, yeah, I guess we already I'm did that. Spot. We're out of time. No, man. Like when he saw somebody doing something inappropriate, he can tell this in 30 seconds. No, I already told that story. I'll you t- didn't tell that story. Yeah, he did. He told it all on the podcast. About the dude doing the thing. And he was like, if you do that With again, I'm going to punch yeah. you in the face. With the flag? I, I thought you were telling me that offline. No. No. Uh, oh, I don't taking know. taking pictures that he shouldn't have been taking. Oh. You really don't remember this? No. Like, I'm going to punch you in the face or something Oh, like no. That. This was, okay, this was at oh, Edge Fest. Oh, yeah. Oh. In Dayton. And yes, this dude was groping women, basically. And I went up to him and I was like, if I see you touch it, because women were crowd surfing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went up to him, I'm like, if you touch another woman, I'm going to punch you in the face. He was like, what? And I'm like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We don't have to talk about it anymore. If I see you do it again, I'm going to put you in a headlock and embarrass you in front of all these people. <laughs> and he stopped. Yeah. He did stop. I'm, I'm glad he got bothered. That was worth the extra 30 anyway, seconds, brother. Right. Thank you. No, I, I think I think it's worth saying that our anger can lead us down a direction toward a product, a productive outcome. Mm-hmm. However, if we cling to that anger, mm. it's going to escalate things in a way that that actually prevent us from going the direction which we want to go. So mm-hmm. anger is data that will often point us in the direction of quote unquote, justice, right? We got a lot more to talk about. In fact, Ryan, I want to disagree with you about something coming up here a little bit on our Talk Aboutable segment. But first, Mm -hmm. Alabama, what do you got for us? Here's a minimalist insight from one of our listeners. Hey, y'all. This is Emily Stewart from Florence, South Carolina, and I wanted to share a tip. So I've been a minimalist my entire life, even as a kid, but I find myself thinking that I don't have anything to get rid of because I'm a minimalist. So I came up with a game with myself that kind of helps me to keep cleaning things out. 
I often shop at Trader Joe's and Aldi's and I bring my own bags, but sometimes I forget and end up having to grab the paper bags at checkout. So my new rule for myself is every time I do this, I have to fill up the paper bags with things from my home to give away or sell. So although forgetting my own bags isn't good for the environment, it turned into a great way to consistently clear out and help keep it fun for me and fresh, even though I am, have been a minimalist for so long. All right, y'all, before we get to our added value segment, real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing going on in the life of the minimalists. Well, at least one of the minimalists. I uh, have a writing class called How to Write Better. And I've been doing these little short videos on YouTube called Bad Writing. I'm going to be working on this new series called Good Writing. And we're doing an audio version of that. It's called the How to Write Better podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll put a link in the show notes. But little four or five minute lessons where I show you an example of bad writing or good writing, or here's an example of how to improve your grammar or use fewer adverbs or adjectives. We break down some sentences. We talk about books that are really powerful. And we talk about other books and how they could be improved. Mm -hmm. Little five, six minute chunks that you can digest. You can walk away with something today that will improve your writing. It's 100% advertisement free. It's called the How to Write Better podcast. And the first three episodes are available right now. You can find them wherever you listen to podcasts or head on over to howtowritebetter.org for (laughs) added value this week, guys. Oh, Ryan. They all went downhill after OK Computer. <laughs> I was oh, listening man. to this uh, over dinner uh, this week. and I was playing it and Bex, she's like, man, this, she looks at the name of the band. And it's called The Smile. And so the added value this week is this band called The Smile. And Bex was like, this sounds so much like Radiohead. <laughs> I'm like, well, it kind of is Radiohead. Yeah. So Tom York and Johnny Greenwood, who are the two main members of Radiohead, or two of the main members of Radiohead, they partnered with this jazz drummer named Tom Skinner. Mm. And they created this band during the pandemic called The Smile. And so it is Radiohead-esque, which Radiohead's one of my favorite bands of all time. And this music, it's sort of ethereal. It's great sort of lying around the house with nothing to do music. Mm. Like, wow, we're just hanging out, we're eating dinner, we're being calm. So the song you're hearing in the background right now, if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, is a song called Waving a White Flag from The Smiles' one and only album. It's an album called A Light for Attracting Attention. Or if you're Mm. watching the YouTube version on the public podcast, you'll see a link you can click on if you want to hear the song as well. What made you pick that particular song? The way that it started was just so, it felt like it was right for our podcast. Yeah. And it was a a great way to end this episode because we're talking about feelings. We're talking about saying no, but if we can say no with a smile, Mm. how much more powerful is that than no, no, no. If I could say, no, I don't think that's for me. I want to say it with a smile. So enjoy waving a white flag. By the way, TK, we got a bunch more surprise questions on the private podcast this week, like what natural remedies can I use to calm my anxiety? How do you know the difference between being intentional and seeking pleasure? How do I improve the communication in my relationship to prevent arguments? Plus a million more questions for the minimalists. And if they want to hear all that, Malabama, tell them what to do. Check out The Minimalist private podcast. Visit patreon.com slash The Minimalist or click the link in the description to subscribe and get your personal link so that our weekly maximal episodes play in your favorite podcast app. You'll also gain immediate access to all of our archives, recordings of live events, weekly home tours, and our private community of thousands of open-minded minimizers like you. In fact, here's a thoughtful testimonial from one of our lovely Patreon podcast supporters. Jamie says, I have been a private podcast subscriber for a little over a month now, and I can't begin to tell you how much you guys have enriched my life. I was in a bad place of anxiety and feeling lost with no way out. I started listening to your public podcast and kept wanting to hear more. So I finally decided to join you on Patreon. I'm so grateful I did. 
I've begun to declutter my personal items and my mental clutter as well. Just one month, Jamie. We have to go back and back charge you now for all the archives. <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome aboard, Jamie, and welcome aboard to all of our new patrons. Where can uh, people comment on this episode, Mal? They can comment on youtube.com slash The Minimalists. And if you have a question or listener tip for our podcast, give us a call. 406-219-7839 or email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalist.com. Follow The Minimalists on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Minimalists. And to get our podcast show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list at theminimalists.com. Thank you, Alabama. That is our show for today, folks. On behalf of Ryan Nicodemus, TK Coleman, Alabama Podcast, Sean Jordan, No More, Professor Sean, Social Jess, Danny Unknown, Post Production Peter, Emma the Immigrant, and the rest of our team. I'm Joshua Fields Milburn. If you leave here today with just one message, let it be this love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace. Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it